You're listening to Errol Parker and Clancy Overall, editors of the Batuta Advocate on Desert Rock FM. Welcome back to the Batuta Advocate radio show with myself, Clancy Overall. I'm joined by Wendell Hussey, Eternal Cadet. And today's guest, very excited for this one, proud, proud Queenslanders, central Queenslanders, I guess you could argue. You would have seen him. If you're in Queensland, you would have seen him either, um, you know, in a pub or in a in, in a field <laughs> or on a amphitheatre of some sort. And if you're not in Queensland, you would have seen him playing grand finals or sporting events, yeah. <laughs> gigs, yeah. Yeah. everywhere. They've They're the band. Everywhere. They sound like a... They sound like a Queensland law firm, <laughs> and they look like a Queensland Miami Vice. <laughs> Busby Maru, thanks for joining us. Thank you, hey. gentlemen. That's um, yeah, I'll take that Miami Vice rap. <laughs> now, uh, I want to go back to the start with Busby Maru. Was it Rocky? Is this the heart, much like the current Queensland origin side? <laughs> like the heart of this all yes. started in Rocky. You've started this off perfectly. We yeah. like talking about the Rocky boys from Origin. Um, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's where it all began. Jeremy was playing in a band yep. with a mutual friend of ours, and I never knew Jeremy. I'd heard about him. I was a couple of years older, and I was studying. I'd come home from from the uni breaks and yeah. bring my acoustic guitar, and they'd be singing their covers, and all the girls would be, you know, looking at them and dancing, and mm-hmm. and then I'd get I up. I went in on that. That's yeah, <laughs> and I thought, wow, this is where it all sort of went downhill for me because I thought I'll oh, I'll get up and get in on that. Yeah. And then I'd sing my, you know, original love songs, and they did not want to borrow that. They wanted old, uh, what were the hits that you were playing back in the day? Oh, K Sam, Gambler, yeah. killing it. Play K Sam. You should have just called the band that. Yeah, you oh, absolutely. So, but then, um, the Gambler. Yeah. Oh, all of it. They were called Keep Left. Yeah. And they had a stolen Keep Left sign at the, the back of the stage. Yeah. Okay. In true style. In true Tom style. would rock up in the middle of the sets <laughs> in our breaks and we'd be out there talking to girls and he'd be sitting there by himself. <laughs> the crowd would be gone and I quickly become, I quickly um, came to realise that I think I need that cool black fella on yep. guitar beside me. Yep. And so I dogged my mate eventually. Yep. He left town and I came back and I was like, hey, Jeremy, just while I'm in town, do you want to help me make these tunes sound a bit better? Yep. And you know, I had this big plan. I was going to travel around um, the world. Yeah. Busk, you know, do my thing after I finish uni. I knew you were going to be a bit of an alt rock troubadour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was never cut out for that, mate. <laughs> I, I'd love, you know, we love Paul Kelly, but I don't read books as much as that. No. So, anyway, yeah, that's what happened. And we started trying to do some demos, and we were just playing at the pubs, really. Yeah. And it just kind of snowballed. Yeah, it was great. When did you know that you were, I mean, it sounds like you already were. Jeremy, but when did you guys know as Busby Maru that you were hot shit in Rocky? <laughs> oh, in Rocky was pretty easy because yeah. there was no one else yeah. doing anything like no, there was no one else playing live music in Rocky. There were old grandfathers with the old beat machines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. play yeah. something yeah. Playing the radio, in the way out west, yeah. and hit playing the strum along. I didn't really know that I was going to do it full time for sure until yeah. I literally quit my job. Yeah, right. yeah, so, um, and even even then, I was like. Oh. This I've got no bit money of, again. <laughs> <laughs> what were you working as when you quit? I was working for the Department of Communities. Yeah, right. Mm, doing some policy advising to the minister. It was riveting. I, 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 I don't know what I was advising. Gear changed and back up and gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I fooled my way to that job. But um, yeah. I was also Actually, working, working for the same department, department yeah. but in Brizzy. I was a lawyer, and I, I had an. Op- I was talking about this earlier. I had this opportunity. They offered me a junior crown prosecutor role in Rockhampton. Jeez. And I don't know, mate, seriously, I don't know how I was, even got that far because I was the Dennis Denudo yeah. <laughs> of all my mates. That's yep. what they'd call me. Yeah. I, was, I was fumbling my way through it. I couldn't believe I actually finished. <laughs> you're going to you're gonna get, an office, you're gonna get an office above the laundromat. That's what you're <laughs> <laughs> Would have been happy with that probably. I was prosecuting people. For doing the same things I was doing on the weekend, yeah, so yeah, I was pretty yeah. hypocritical. Yeah. And then you all went and started a band and made a job out of doing those things. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yes, made it formal. <laughs> but yeah, Jeremy and I used to um, stupidly, you know, ring each other for free in Rocky. And yeah. oh, hello. And Jeremy used to always ring my secretary and go, "Hi, it's Jeremy from uh, Department of Communities in Rockhampton. It's Thomas there, please." <laughs> and they go, "Jeremy, stop being a dickhead. I was having a gig on the weekend." <laughs> <laughs> And so that was was that you packed it all into go on tour or was it packed it all into to write songs? 
Oh, I think we just got too busy because yeah, we right. weren't necessarily we touring, signed. touring. We got signed by yeah. Warner Music at the time and we just had gigs every weekend. Right. And it was just, we'd go do these amazing gigs, festivals. People actually liked us back then too. Yeah. We were young, cool <laughs> girls liked us. Well, people still like us. <laughs> you mean <laughs> young people still? Younger. Yeah. Yeah. Younger, yeah. People, yeah. younger people like yeah. us. Yeah. Then we go back to work on Monday. And it was so depressing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like back to your computer, it's like, oi, Tom. And we couldn't tell anyone about the gigs because we'd, all, we'd yeah, taken, taken the day off, off yeah. sick or whatever. Bit so of we'd a, hide uh, it. Bruce Wayne kind of thing. Yeah, you know? very much. Yeah, it's like, if only these people knew this other life I'm living. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I've got to say, like though, everyone in my office, that, and they, they still, like, re, I still in touch with them, these guys. They used to walk past me as I'm sitting at the desk and they go, 25 years, you get your golden watch. Do you want your golden watch? And they'd come back and go, piss off out of here, mate, please. <laughs> <laughs> We're stuck. You yeah, can go. Yeah, you can, yeah. Please, let you sign. I'll tell you actually about the day we had to resign, which the week. We got signed, which is another story altogether. That is, uh, that just made me think of something pretty <laughs> hilarious about that house we were talking about beforehand. <laughs> Down there. I should that. talk about that. Yeah. I'll go back to that. Yeah. But we got signed. We had to fly down to Sydney. So we had no more flexi time, no no annual leave, no sickness. We had yeah. nothing left because we had exhausted that. You faked enough funerals. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're, done, you're done on compassionate leave as well. Yeah. <laughs> we had done it all, mate. Anyway, it was Wednesday and I we had a plan. Jeremy and our manager at the time, who was based in Rocky as well, were flying from Rocky to Sydney. Yeah. And I was flying from Brizzy, but I had to go into work in my suit and – Ah, uh, belly ache, got to go home. Went straight down to the change table, you know, the dressing room, got in the Converse, ripped jeans, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> straight to the uh, airport, met the boys there, got signed. It was huge. You know, it was just the start of the social media days too, so we had to ask for no one to post any photos. <laughs> <laughs> you told them you had a belly ache and then went to the airport. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, honestly, because I, I felt bad for Lion because they were so good to me as yeah. well. And anyway, you're probably listening to this now and they probably knew. Anyway, we went there and they went, Jeremy did the same thing. It, anyway, the next day was pretty easy because I was still sick. You know, yeah, still yeah. at Sydney. Ah, still sick. No worries, get better. And you were sick that day. Oh, very sick, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a huge night. At the cricketer's arms, I remember that. Um, and then on Friday, came back, like signed. This was unbelievable. Came back and they're like, how are you feeling? And just couldn't say anything. Are <laughs> you feeling okay? Just like wanted to tell everyone that we got signed and <laughs> had to wait for the end of next week. And anyway. Just a little bit queasy. A little bit queasy, yeah. yeah. So they flew you down to, to sign and, and play? or? Oh, we saw them. We played in the, yeah. played in the offices and um, then they took us out and, yeah. you know, told us the plan and how exciting it was. Schmoozed you. Yeah, they schmoozed us. Well, I mean, on. those lunches were like at least you... Whatever else comes from this arrangement, we know tonight every <laughs> beer we drink's paid for. So. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Well, Jeremy was actually shouting beers back because we didn't know the deal, and they're like, "What are you doing, mate?" <laughs> I it get around. didn't take us long to work out if that Warner card was over the bar. You go hard. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yeah. Well, we got yeah. in trouble. Did we get in trouble once. Yeah, I wasn't even there. My oh, wife went oh, in lieu of me, and she was just, she was racking up a martini, uh, <laughs> espresso martini bar, espresso <laughs> martinis. Anyway, they were good times. So, yeah, we went in to ask for more time away and my, I was trying to plot it out for the rest of the year. My boss went, mate, just go. <laughs> so, yeah, as we always tell the story, our drummer always used to say, you know, every day's a Saturday, boys. Yeah. Come on, quit. You can do it. Took a photo of the resignation letter and went, every day's a Saturday. Let's do this. Yeah, right. That's exciting. And being based in Rocky, small regional town, it's not super small Rocky, obviously. Are you but based there now? Jeremy, oh, I am. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. But back then, when you were just kicking off and you were getting going, coming from a town like that where most of the celebrities are footballers or you know sports people or whatever, what was it like being the musical celebrities around town that everyone probably wanted a piece of? It doesn't happen mm. that much anymore. Like the local boys that pop off. I mean, there's, Rocky's got you guys, and you know Newley's got Silver Chair, and. And, and and you don't really see that as much as you used to in the pub rock era. Every town oh, yeah. had a band. That was yeah, on that. but even still, coming out of Rocky originally, and the country, I would say country Queensland. What would happen is anyone that had anything going, they'd move to Brisbane, Sydney, yes. or Melbourne, mm. and then they'd Straight become away. a Sydney or Melbourne or Brisbane band. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we were actually were... talking about that with Tex Perkins the other day. He, yeah. he went from Darwin to Brizzy. You know? Oh, was he from Darwin? Yeah, right. Yeah. And so you just presume that he, I just yeah. presumed he was a Melbourne mm. boy. Yeah, you know? yeah, and then ended up yeah. 
And then you think of American music, right? People own where they're from. Yeah. And there's a sound to it. And we look back in hindsight, like we've got a sound and it's like people say it's a Queensland sound, which is yeah. probably a bit, you know, but uh, yeah, I suppose it is a bit sunshiny and Jeremy's harmonies and yeah, whatever. Yeah. So, Rocky. There is a sound, yeah. There's the beef. Kind of smells like Industrial steak. kind of. <laughs> <laughs> the beef Motown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then when did you, I mean, you had to learn how to make a trade out of this, right? Like you signed, so it's a bit different now. You, you know, it's not like Slim Dusty does a hundred albums while on the road playing in a different town every night. That was a trade, right? Yeah. yeah. You yeah, guys totally. got signed and they said, we'll look after you. You just keep playing. Pretty much. And you just keep making albums and, you know, you guys can disappear for a little while and make an album and come back. How did you begin, you know, looking at this as a trade? Like now we've got... We've got new bosses now. We've got deliverables that we've got yeah. to bring them because they're not going to fucking sign us for one album and no, look but after us forever. I've got to say, we were signed after we'd already recorded and released our first album. Right. They just re-released it yeah. and, got, <laughs> and actually got us on Triple J and got <laughs> us played. But we probably had, we probably just then thought, oh, okay, let's do whatever it takes. to. Yeah. But they were like, no, pull the reins you guys are going to be long-term career artists, yeah. so we just want you to sort of do your thing. So got to give them credit there. All right. So they, they did let you be yourselves a little bit. Yeah, to the yeah. point where we were talking about this yesterday, Jeremy. We are probably trying to race ahead, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. You know, we wanted the first album to be Ed Sheeran style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we came know. through with Ed Sheeran, and he was playing 500. <laughs> we were playing 500. We were playing 1,000. He was playing 1,000. We were playing 800. He was playing 30. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep going like that. <laughs> yeah. You guys got to the Tivoli. Yeah. He was at Suncorp. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe stadium tours on this next album. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, so I just got to keep yourself humble. Well, mm. Queensland is becoming a bit of a... You know, a bit of a Texas in that regard. I, I think the most impressive thing that's happened to live music in in the last 20 years in Australia is this Fortitude Hall that they've opened oh, up in magic, yeah. it's magic, And that's a perfect size for, you know, it's huge. what is it, 4,000 standing? Yeah, that's about a, three and a half, and you can close up the top and get, you yeah. know, 1,800. And they've got a bar as well up the top if you want to do, like, cabaret for a 400 and, mm. and then they got I think we did a book launch up the top of the uh, mm. top of the old Fortitude Outpost. Hall. Outpost, it's great. Yeah. Mm. We rehearsed there. But, yeah, it's you know, and big sound, and there's all this stuff happening in Queensland. And they've also been, I mean, look, I'm saying it now, I'm calling it. Ten years' time, Busby Maru at the opening ceremony of the Brisbane Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> we might be dead by then. <laughs> I wanted to ask about the name Busby Maru. Obviously, um, you know, there's lots of people always talk about that. It'd be a good band name and people throw all sorts of band names around. There's different iterations of yeah. bands and artists and all that sort of stuff. Jeremy Maru, Thomas Busby. Obviously, we landed on Busby Maru. Yeah. Well, I said I said at the start as a joke, it sounded like a, a law firm, except yeah. then I found out he's a lawyer and they actually had the same department. Yeah. Not too far off at all. <laughs> so yeah, pretty close. That. Maybe that's life after music, <laughs> setting up in Rocky. That sounds depressing too. Yeah. <laughs> Were there any that hit the um, cutting room floor or were there any kind of other things you went out under, apart from front left or left? Keep, keep left. Keep left. left. Keep left, yeah, that was out the Petty window. Theft, keep left. <laughs> sounds like an activist band, keep yeah. left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stay they left. Definitely Keep left and stay left. <laughs> they were out in the smoking area picking up girls' band. Um, protest, <laughs> protest, party rock. <laughs> Play Uncle Cracker, um, mate. We, I remember googling names like trying to think of something clever. Yeah, couldn't. It was too clever for Busby Peru. Yeah. Needed chat GBT. Yeah, yeah. we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How good is it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but my old man, he has no shame. When he was alive, he was literally no shame. And we'd be playing at the Oxford Hotel, which was our local. And on the board was Tom and Jerry. And that started to stick. And, oh, we hated it. We hated it. Tom and Jerry, Tom and Jerry. And my dad would pull up at the roundabout, pull the car up at the roundabout, leave the car. Cars couldn't get around him. He's in his pyjamas. He'd just go out to get milk and see us. And he'd just limp on in with his PJs on and start banging on the... On the guitar, I'll be like, please, Dad, this girl's here, please. <laughs> please, Dad. And he'd be going, Tom and Jerry, Tom and Jerry. Yeah. And then he jumped back in his car. So that name started to stick. The very next day we went, let's just stick with our surnames. Yeah, yeah, We've got to do yeah. something about yeah. this Tom and Jerry yeah. business. Yeah. <laughs> there wasn't much thought really put into it. It, was no. just, it just happened. Yeah. And then not, not only that, 
Jeremy's actual name is pronounced Morale. Right. But because Jeremy was just sort of like didn't correct people. Yeah. It's, it's well, so basically break. it's on Triple J and that's it now. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tom and Alex have said that. And yeah. So, yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Right, so your family, uh, were you always Rocky or are they? I'm born and bred in Rocky, but yeah, right. uh, all my family's from Torres Strait. Oh, right, yeah. right, right. And morale, it's an interesting one where you kind of let the... <laughs> You can't let the punter decide what your name is <laughs> well, in terms of what the band name is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We can't right. anywhere from sort of Cairns North. They'll say Busby Morale because they're probably, from, yeah. familiar yeah. familiar <laughs> with my family name. But my dad couldn't. He couldn't even speak English properly. So yeah, he was right. just like, ah, no, yeah, you know, right. like call him out on roll calls. He would just be like, oh, yeah, just roll with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> so we just rolled with it. So yeah, right. And mm. you both come from musical families. Yeah, mm. Jeremy's family though. That's next level. Right. I would get the shits because they're like, is Tommy coming? Can you get him to bring the guitar? I'm like, what the? And yeah. I'd get there for one song and then they'd take it and I'm like, well, why do you even make me play? <laughs> it's embarrassing. They're all so talented and yeah, not going to yeah. stumble along. But yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's interesting. Each band has their, you know, their inspiration as a band. But individually, what, what would you say was being played around you as kids? Chalk and cheese um, yeah. from what we grew up with. I, you know, I, I'm the youngest of eight kids, so yeah. I've got seven brothers and sisters four sisters and three brothers. So it's just anywhere from Wilson Phillips, Madonna from my yeah. sister. Oh, of course. <laughs> you know, all the singles. Yeah. And then my brothers were Bruce Springsteen, Tom Petty, R.E.M. and The Cars and Garth Brooks. <laughs> yeah, so and I, would, I was an album guy and yeah. those singer-songwriters, Crowded House, of course, Paul yeah. Kelly, and that that's me. And then Jeremy. Yeah, mine's was, very yeah. chalk and cheese. That's a good way to put it. I grew up right in the church, so. Yeah, right. Hillsong from start to finish. Really? <laughs> no, that was that, me. that far north at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, just uh, gospel. My dad listened to a little bit of old school country, like yep. proper country western. Yeah. You know, Buck Owens and the Buckaroos type yeah, style. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I learnt my trade just at church, Thursday, yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That, and that's, I mean, that, we hear that's a recurring story in any country with any musician, whether or not they're Christian artists or not. It's a great start. You get given an instrument and an audience. Oh, but yeah, then you, and, and as a teenager, you know, and they played well. Well, you've got we had the best gear to play on every yeah, weekend, yeah. Mm-hmm. week in, week out. So yeah. it, it was, it was, it was good. And the music's, the music's good. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That that, uh, that Christian Hillsong stuff. It's it's good music. So it wasn't necessarily like. Um, it was Pentecostal. It wasn't. Pentecostal. It, wasn't it wasn't a TI church or anything. No, nah, no, nah, it was yeah, full Pentecostal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, <laughs> that's where you can learn to play guitar, mate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've got more resources than the school, oh the school music department. <laughs> I, I was just telling Jamie, I've I just uh, good segue. I've only seen the first two episodes of the of the new show of yours. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Holy shit! It is outstanding. <laughs> it flew my mind both episodes, yeah, but. Yeah. Rugby league for days. I could watch that. Oh, and I will watch that. Yeah. Super League Wars one again. Oh, well, I think you boys will like the fine cotton one because that's when we go full in on Queensland. Do you? 1980s. Oh. 1980s. Uh, we got the old artist uh, Richie Bell. Uh, you admit Richie in <laughs> no, West End. No. Indigenous artist from West End. We said we need someone who can talk about 1980s Queensland from the position of someone who might have actually had a problem with it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, Talked yeah. to a lot of blokes. Yeah, I'm sure okay. Rocky speaks to a lot of blokes about that era. They're like, oh, we love Joe. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we'll get an Aboriginal artist activist. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and we're um, bouncing him off, off Catter. So oh, these wow. two crazy old men from different, you know, that would be different awesome. ends of the spectrum. Um, and, and basically how you know, horse racing was um, basically at the centre of the corruption of Underworld and government, it all met at horse Yeah, race. right, of course it did. <laughs> yeah. And it's the most Queensland story of yeah. all. Okay, I'm yeah. fascinated already. Look forward already. to it. Yeah. I look forward to it. Um, but yeah, no, we, see, we learned a bit about, but, but in our research on the Hillsong episode, we learned a bit about, you know, that. And when people walk into those Pentecostal churches, particularly those like aeroplane hangar ones in the city, it's an experience, it's a spiritual experience because... You're listening to the best audio you're ever going to oh, hear. You don't know, oh, get that yeah. shit in a pub gig. Like. No, yeah, <laughs> no, no, you, don't, you, you, you only credit uh, Cole Chisel only just getting that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's full. It's so good. Oh, yeah. You just um, the gear and the, and the musicianship. Like yeah. you know, well, Jeremy started out playing drums and yeah. bass, and he like, he learned every instrument yeah. there. <laughs> they wouldn't let me play guitar because there was other guys like because there's heaps of guitarists. So I got yeah. stuck on the bass or. Yeah. The instrument no one really wants to play. Yeah. <laughs> but it was good. You learn, you, you, like I said, you learn your trade really yeah. good because you play so much too. And then, I mean, everyone's got their moment, whether they're Gang of Years or they're, um, you know, Matt Corby or 
any number of bands that came through the church and ended up at Oxford Arts Factory. Um, <laughs> what was the moment for you when you're like, actually, music can be a bit more fun if you go down this path? <laughs> oh, I think it was, I was probably honestly just meeting Tom. Yeah, right. Um, you know, I was playing, I was playing at... Um, Playing at pubs on the weekend and yeah. getting in trouble for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't play at church if you play at the pubs. <laughs> the girls at the pub. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But meeting Tom really made me like, oh, okay. Yeah. And and I learned a lot about outside music too. I was so sheltered in that yeah. in that church environment. I didn't. All oh, right. I'd, so you got to yeah, you got to hear those all those themes, mate. We. And I reckon this has kind of helped develop the sound yeah. because Jeremy had no. One, no knowledge of, like, actual bands. Mainstream. Ma- any yeah, mainstream, yeah, even old yeah, bands. Rolling yeah. Stones. I was yeah, like, yeah. who's Rolling Stones? <laughs> like, I'm like, what? I mean, and it's you almost would like to be in that position to it was because discover all that again, mate, you know? Well, also, he didn't have any influences, so he didn't yeah. care. And it kind of, um, you know, it added to our flavour because he wasn't trying to play like anyone else. He's just doing yeah. what he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and we didn't recognise that for a while, looking back, you know, and... Jeremy also loved like country music. We used to fight about the music we liked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you know, he used to always say, "I, oh yes, look, go for your arty taste." Yeah. <laughs> and I used to say, "You like Keith Urban? He straightens his hair." <laughs> <laughs> and now we both appreciate. Yeah. Both well, we've all played a few musters now, so you love country music, right? Yeah. Did you get up there? Yeah, we're play- playing there this year yeah, too. Yeah. So it, it is hard, and I guess you've explained that why. Um, this is the case, but it is hard to pigeonhole Busby Maru. You'll be put on country music playlists, and you know, you'll I, even I dare say, you know, some people will consider it a bit rootsy yeah. or in, in, in definitely indigenous uh, um, Australian music as well. And uh, you, you kind of fit a whole lot of different categories. What do you guys think you are? Yeah, good question. I mean, the best way I've heard it described, where I'm like, okay, I think that makes more sense, is folk inspired pop. Okay. You know, I, I, I like well, Obviously, yeah. I would have never given you that. No. That's <laughs> not, I mean, maybe that was old school. I don't know. But I saw that. I was like, oh, maybe that's kind of right. Because it's yeah. acoustic acoustic music at the end of the yeah. day. And yeah. Jeremy can play, you know, the electrics and all the, all the stuff. But yeah. when it's the, the two acoustics and us doing harmonies, you yeah. know, we wrap that up with all the nice production and all, yeah. whatever. It it still sounds like Buzz Bimaru. Fifth album now. Mm. How have things changed from that first album? I mean, let's not go with the first album because you made the first album before you got signed. <laughs> Second album, you get a taste of the resources that are available to, you know, a went, signed up band. In Nashville, did all yeah. the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I lived it out and I can't remember much of it. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves telling their little trip to Nashville. <laughs> We're talking to your mate up there. Um, Coxie. Coxie. He's talking <laughs> about his trip to Nashville. I was like, fuck. Oh, mate. Unsupervised by the sounds of things. Oh, mate. <laughs> Any trip, he could just go down to the local shop and it'd be unsupervised and wild. <laughs> he pres- reckons deep sea diving uh, forced him to quit oh, cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> no, it has. Yeah. I thought he was shitting when he told me. He's like, he's like, all of a sudden, we're going fishing. No, we're off subject here. He's fishing. And he's like, oh, I should only get in the diving. Right. Like, well, you're going to get in the diving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, you can't dive, mate. We're too fat, and you, and you punch the darts. <laughs> he quit the next day. And that was eight months oh, ago. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> telling the truth. That's a handy hack out there. But get I need to tell you this much. Diving it's not real deep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, mate, I can stand up here. It's like, yeah, this is here. <laughs> swimming and swimming and swimming. It's like, you need a few down. more belts to put yeah. in your guts, mate. Yeah. Oh, God. He told, us, he told us about sinking two boats, too, as well. So oh, yeah. he, oh, he's, yeah. he's really gone. He's, he's from the snowy mountains, mate. Yeah, he's he's learning a lot about the coast. Mate, he is I was meant to be on that voyage. Oh, right. And I said to him, I said, mate, and I knew the bloke he was going with, he was mad. I said, mate, have you looked at the weather? Yeah, yeah, no, we'll just, we'll just. We'll make sure we drop the anchor. So, well, naturally, that's what you do. <laughs> I rang him the next day. I said, hey, just go. I said, oh, we sunk. Sent me a picture. We sunk it. <laughs> Two boats gone under, under the water. <laughs> and, yeah, he was talking about that guy. I, I actually heard that podcast, and I know the story well. But <laughs> the guy that he went with, who I've recently met, is from Stanage Bay. They call him the pirate. And okay. That is a journey in itself, mate. <laughs> you, he's got his pirates. Those two man. together. Was oh, so forget the weather. Things. Going out on a boat with this bloke is. Right. <laughs> if you look on our Instagram, we've got a series coming out at the moment, like a little Instagram series yeah, yeah. leading up to the release of our album. And we went up to Stanage Bay to rehearse. That's what we told our wives yeah, at least. Yeah, anyway, yeah. and mate, he this bloke took us out 
Oh man, just have a look. It's nuts. <laughs> and that's, so it doesn't surprise me the that pirates. he's a boat. <laughs> I'm looking for him, actually. We're going up that way. What so is the boat. genesis of the pirate? Where yeah, did that come from? He sunk two boats. No. <laughs> that, the pirate well, must have been before that. Right? He got his leg cut off in a motorbike because he was getting chased by drug laws. <laughs> 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 that just sums it up in a sentence. And he was called the pirate before he lost his leg. Yeah. <laughs> so, how far are you guys from that stretch? Up there, the Badlands is that is that near Rocky? That's bit- the Mulder stretch. Yeah, so yeah. About, that's that's the turn off to Stenish Bay where we're talking right, about is yeah, smack right. bang that's, in the middle of that stretch. That's where you're going. Yeah, well, that, that, I, I, I want to go up and check it out. I mean, it would be worth a Batuta Advocate episode on it, oh, like well, just the Badlands. It's you know? the um, most yeah. notorious stretch of highway yeah. in the country. Yeah, it, it's yeah. like there's a lot of black spots, a lot of dangerous like mm. road accidents, but there's also a lot of murders. Just, <laughs> it's just like yeah. there's also a <laughs> A abandoned town that's meant to be just off oh, the really? side, like somewhere around there where there's a ghost town. They call yeah, it. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we know a bit about them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. What, what is different now that you're married up? Is it much more clinical? It can you be. You guys do it off site? You do it in different rooms now? Or, I mean, you're, different, you're living in different places. We're so busy. Like, we're yeah. on the road non stop. We've got so much, so much going on. When we go home, we've both got four kids. And when yeah. we go home, my kids are young. Jeremy's are older now. Where well, there's four between you? No, I should have known. You're one family of Family of breeders, mate. Yeah, yeah. Um, not saying it's a good idea yeah. as a musician <laughs> on the road all the time. It's, but you it's, could take eight kids if you had to. Holy moly. <laughs> I could. I wouldn't, but I could. So, yeah, when we go home, it's just, it's clocked off, yeah. you know, and you're, you're hanging out. And, yeah. But when it's writing time, it's like, okay, we we got to book it in a bit. Yep. This album in particular, like, yeah, things have changed. We've I wouldn't say we've settled down. Mm. We've just gotten older yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and slower. Yep. Um, but when we're recording, with this album in particular, we just took our time. We've never mm. been able to take our time. I've always yeah. probably thought, you know, it's just had agendas, even yeah. though we said we didn't. We thought we might have an agenda for radio or yeah. whatever. But just the older we've become and sort of settled in our lives, it's like, let's just write an album that we'd actually listen to. And, and you've got the fans too that you can... You know, you've got a base now. Is yeah, well. You don't have to worry right, about yeah. catching new audiences or whatever. It sounds like a free place to be because, like, yeah. you don't have to consider what works for radio. You don't have to consider – you're not even going to think about the social media aspects of music or anything like that. You've got the fans. Yeah. So you're making an album that everyone wants. Oh, totally. And, yeah. look, do you know what's helped us is between album four and this album, the whole music landscape changed so much. Yeah. Mm. Singles aren't really singles. Who yeah. knows what the hell's what? You know, yeah, the Spotify yeah. streaming, radio. It's all yeah. just like an album's really a photo shoot now, isn't it? Like yeah, for the cover, like that's pretty much. The, yeah. I think you know we're one of the last um, bands to do albums. I yeah, think, yeah, you know, but yeah. we're just not really a single TikTok band. Yeah, you haven't got the little TikTok jingle. It's yeah. ready to go viral. <laughs> Thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Busby, the Busby Maru dance. It is, it, but it is we're funny. Better. It's funny some of the some of the old music that tends to do well on these um, yeah. platforms. And, and Kate Bush was a great example. Perfect. I think all these little millennials thought they discovered running up that hill. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. like, <laughs> it would be great if they discovered biting my time again. <laughs> yeah. I know, mean, it could. It's like um, Uncle Kev's retirement plan when from little things, big things grow, ended up on the insurance ad. Remember that one? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. How good. He's just yeah. still reaping it. Yeah. Oh, it's good. We, we caught up with him in Toowoomba last year. He's, he's still doing well. He's... um. He's rock and roll. You're talking about you're talking about protest Rocky. He, he told us he Uncle Kev Carmody didn't know that his his album had done his first album had done so well for a couple of years because he wasn't using the phone because it was tapped. <laughs> <laughs> talk about, talk about an agitator. <laughs> yeah. Well, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the favourite spots you guys like to go to? You do a lot of smaller towns, regional tours. What are some of the best spots? Yeah, are there any, places are you look any, forward to? Are there any patches like? Have you got a you know surprising patch somewhere where they where they turn out for Busby Maru? Mate, I'll tell you a surprising spot that we didn't know existed. We do this thing called Tiny Towns tours mm-hmm. every now and then. Yeah. Can't do them all, all year round. You'd be sh- yeah. Yeah, you, you die. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, it's pretty good. You, yeah. you, you strip back to basics. Yeah, you, right, right, you try right. to hustle a bit, and you, you, but you're just drinking all yeah. the time. Yeah, and, yeah. and regional yeah. pissed is a different oh, level. Oh, yeah, sick. yeah. It's, yeah. So yeah. True. it's an old school lock-in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's actually just yeah, fallen yeah, yeah. Public, over, and, and he's got back up and gone. The public has been waiting for this for months. You're not going to bed. How many times do you go to bed? I couldn't go to bed in the last tour in Oddsvold. 
Um, I because I had this two gigs left, and I went straight from the gig into the room. I was losing my voice, and the publican, who was a legend, he just followed me in and went, "Right, I'll be sitting here for the next few hours." And that was five in the morning, and then the boys are knocking on the door. I'm like, "Here we go." <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you can't do too many tiny town tours. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Seriously, but they're awesome and we love it. And the people are just, man, they're up for it. They're up mm. for it. But when we announced one of our first ones, we were like, where do you want us to come? Yeah. And we already sort of plotted where we were going to go. And we want to know if there's anywhere else. You know. And there's this place in New South Wales called Armatree. And they kept saying, come to Armatree, Armatree, Armatree. I'm like, what? These people just won't stop. And I Googled it, 26 people. No chance. Yeah, right. Right? And it's in the middle of nowhere. 26? That's, but, I mean, has that... Well, is hey, that even a post office? Probably not. <laughs> it's to oh, it. maybe it's back, back in, in the day. Dubbo, you know? Yeah. 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 Six, anyway. seven houses and a pub. Yeah. 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 And yeah, just properties pub, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And we get there for the first one, the Publicans and Legends. We get there. And we got there overnight. And we, we stayed at the pub. We woke up for breakfast. They cooked us a ribeye on the bun and two is new. Yum. And literally nine o'clock. Two is new. <laughs> Schooner. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. armatory breakfast. <laughs> it's like, wow. Then took a shooting, clay shooting, and the boys set up. The 800 people capped at 800 people turned up to that turned gig. Up. Sold out at 800. We what can't be Central West New South Wales. Mate, this just above six. Dubbo. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. They yeah. caught this train in. They get off at the not even a train stop. It's just the pubs. They just stop at the pub. And they jump <laughs> off. And they're all maggot. <laughs> and we played. They didn't. Most of them didn't know us. Yeah. It's just the buck. We've since learned this. People want to go to places. Yeah, right. And if there's music, great. And then yeah. if they connect with you, then they've discovered you. And then the next year, we did it again. And then yeah. the next year, we did it again. And we haven't been for since before COVID. But we'll probably go to this places you know all yeah the time. It's, and, and it, it is funny that the towns are recognizing that now like it all started off here with that drought in new south wales is the millennium drought and parks said we got to do something and they come up with the elvis festival in parks yeah, you know because they, they're like mm. you know there wasn't a harvest this year there wasn't one last year we need to bring people and they did the parks elvis festival and i've just found out last couple of years i realized they've started doing a bowie festival in corinda <laughs> out near walgut because that's where he filmed let's dance in that country oh park. did he yeah wow. and then uh, there's also a yarn that the only gig johnny cash ever did in australia was a fundraiser for the nurses in stanthorpe <laughs> you were and so stanthorpe's <laughs> thinking about maybe doing a johnny is that true? black festival is, is that true yeah, they yeah, make he that was up. here on holidays and yeah. someone roped him into do that in summer. <laughs> Do that in summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He saw that yeah, part yeah, of Australia. Right. Yeah. Now we're we're very lucky. We, we, Jeremy we said this yesterday. He's like, doesn't know why more bands don't. Do what we do and try to get to these places. But yeah. we're lucky with our style of music, and also coming from Rocky, yeah. we go out to the mining towns, to all these country yeah. towns, and play the twenty first and eighteenth, and yeah. weddings and everything. We did it all, and so. Then when we became Busby Maru, they would be making the trip into Brizzy yeah, yeah, to yeah. watch us. Mm-hmm. And we're like, man, and the penny drops. Like, Why don't we go back yeah, and, but yeah. actually put on not quite a Hillsong production yeah. show, yeah. show, but let's take the gear. Pop a gig there, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we did. And it worked. They just turned up and they appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And they'll turn up next time. That's right. <laughs> Some of the biggest selling festivals in the country, though, are festivals in Rib- yeah, Weird yeah. spots, mm, Winton Way out west, Big Red Bash. Yeah. Winton, yeah, for sure. Danny Eat Muster. Yeah. yeah. You know, so <laughs> Danny. You know, 15, yeah. 20,000 tickets and they're in yeah. tiny little towns yeah. in the middle of have, you, have you ever played in the islands? No. Nah. No, nah, I mean, we've gone we've up done, we've, we've done little school visits, but yeah. we've never done a gig gig. We've, we've yeah. had guitars out on the yeah. beach and stuff. Yeah. But uh, we've never, we've never yeah, done I think a you'd, gig. You'd probably, you could probably get do a gig on Thursday Island. Yeah. And they've mm. asked us to come and do one. Yeah, yeah Seam and Dan used to play. Was it Horn or Thursday? Oh, Where did he play? Yeah. Thursday or Horn. Every Thursday he'd be playing. That would have been a, a, yeah. a great experience to see yeah, him there, yeah. eh? But, yeah, we've, Jeremy's taken me on some pretty mad fishing trips up yeah. there. Well, and, like, insane. scary, very scary. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to scary butt, but no scary. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, though. Holy yeah. hell. Eating, eating locally. Up there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Turtle and Jugan on the menu every night. Yeah. Um, oh, even I get a bit scared because you jump on on these tinnies and there is no such thing as safety gear. No. <laughs> and there's no such thing as someone coming to rescue you. <laughs> you come back. There's nothing under the sea. <laughs> and no, you're halfway to Papua New Guinea on a yellow tinny with that. You need pliers to tighten up the bloody <laughs> wing nuts to make sure it starts. And if you lose the pliers overboard, you're dead because there's sharks everywhere. Yeah. I remember seriously just sinking into my boat one stage, deep into the second day, 
and just was thinking of my kids and wife back home. <laughs> I, I, I didn't. I thought I was going to die. Yeah. You don't take the pirate on those trips. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, he eat, no, eat those trips up. He would actually. He'd probably uh, get you out of it. I took an EPIRB up. I thought like, oh, I've got a BCR if I buy an EPIRB. If I get stuck in there, I'll pop the button. They're like, how long do you think it takes to get a helicopter here? <laughs> I'll oh, yeah. Because the shark's <laughs> everywhere, mate. Oh, like, it's okay. coming from Moresby. <laughs> yeah. It's not coming here. Yeah. And Jeremy's... Yeah, so this is shark. <laughs> oh, Jeremy's oh, yeah. Island in particular. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I like, mean, oh, they're on the beach, mate. They people, literally beach themselves. People... I mean, I'll have to show you the video because people think I'm joking when I say I can walk down to the beach, put my, put your, you know, your feet in the water up to your ankles and grab a shark three metres long as it swims past yeah. and, <laughs> and yeah. drag it up the beach. Yeah. Okay. It's not like... So it's not even just yarns; it's like it's visible. You can see them right oh, there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mate, yeah. where we're standing, they're still swimming. Like people still swimming. So they're not that aggressive, or they're I gummies. Reckon. But every now and again, a big tiger will come through and just cut one in half. So they, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Because the water's so clear, you can yeah. kind of see them coming. Yeah. So someone sort of goes, "Oh, no, the sharks are sort of wandering this way." Yeah. Well, who's going to get the tinny today? Oh, I'm not me. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect meal for those buggers, eh? The, the blighter tinny. Yeah. Right. Oh well, sounds like that's on the cards then. I guess. I mean, your island's not big enough. You're saying what's that? Oh, it's it's big enough. I mean, there's only a couple hundred people on the island. It's a very small island, but I mean, get, getting there and back mm. back is insanely expensive and insanely scary as well. Also, scary. tiny little also planes scary. and the the, the the end of the airstrips to cliff and you sort of <laughs> you shut your eyes when you land. And you got to weigh stuff. yourself when you get on because you can't you know, obviously be over a certain weight and t- you no, got serious. It's not a jet star flight. No, nah, yeah. and if you've got a couple of Jeremy's <laughs> uncles that have just been eating you know, yeah, dugongs yeah, for the last. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, did, did he? You're like, did he wait? Uh, and then the plane's kind of on a tilt coming in. You're like, please land. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like fucking adventure tourism. It's an experience. Adrenaline it's an tourism, experience for yeah, sure. Yeah. It actually is, seriously, it's the best thing I've ever done. And the first time we went with Jeremy, he was shitting himself. So I was even, yeah. I was petrified. Mm. Yeah. And Small he, planes aren't fun, though. No, not I'm so not much the right. plane, but just you going back to country. You hadn't been for a while. And, yeah. yeah, true. And you didn't know what to expect, I think. You know, and there's a whole history about this island in particular. And then I remember an old lady was one of your aunties that you didn't know. She just walked straight up to you, grabbed you by the face. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God. Turned and went, welcome home, son. Oh, It's like, yeah, holy yeah. moly. Because yeah, when, yeah. I mean, obviously when they're up there, we're down here, so we get called mainlanders because yeah, they yeah. still live on the island. So it's like, oh, well, we're still, yeah. I'm still a Murray Islander too. Yeah. But as soon as you go there, it's just like, wow, you're family, you know. Yeah, so yeah, everyone yeah, comes yeah, together right. and makes you feel very, very emotional sometimes. Do they, do they nice. turn out, um, the mainland TI mob, they turn out in your gigs in, 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 in Australia? Oh, absolutely, in yeah. Mainland? Yeah, anywhere, yeah. especially up north, you know, yeah. all. All my family, if they're down, yeah, they're, yeah. they're definitely coming. The guest list is generally bigger than the punters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the door. <laughs> yeah, and they tuck it's right just, in too. You just, not, you just can't not put them on the door. <laughs> you like, just can't not put them on the door. No, you can't so get away with that. You just can't not. <laughs> but, um, also dangerous for Jeremy. He lost his dad at a young age. So some of the uncles... When we first started touring, they hadn't seen him maybe since or whatever. Yeah, and right. I remember one time we rocked up in Cairns. We were playing at like our first sold out Shark Tanks. Anyway, we get there Friday and one of his uncles come to pick him up Friday morning to come around to the house. And he was, Jeremy didn't want to go. I was like, just go. He's like, no, you don't understand. You don't understand. Anyway, next day is a gig Saturday. We hadn't seen Jeremy for two days. Yeah, right. We couldn't get a hold of him. Yeah. Holy moly, it was a bender. If I could say one. <laughs> he tried to warn you. He tried to <laughs> warn us. He tried to get away with it. <laughs> and But rocked up, now the gig, and everyone was there, and so it all worked out. But um, I was petrified. <laughs> I was petrified. <laughs> so what's the feeling with album number five? I mean, what would you say, I've asked you to describe yourselves as a band throughout your time you know, together, but what would you say the sound is on this one? <sighs> Ambitious. Yep. Uh, you know, a little bit. In the past, we tried to write big songs that, you know, you're always thinking that you're not as acoustic as you yep. should be or it's not really Buzz Mirror, but they still sound like us. We've just we've just tried to, you know, step up the notch with some of the production. But yep. then in the guts of the album, we've gone back to basics as well and really just tried to strip it to the stories. And, and that was to Jeremy's credit, actually, you know, we tried to re-record a few songs and he was like, no, no, we're just going with the demo. Yep. Let's not overthink it. And that's part of where we're at with this album as well, just... Really, not trying to impress anyone. Yeah. A little bit self indulgent because we're writing for ourselves. We're not trying to write for yeah. to keep radio happy or yeah. 
tick all the boxes that the label might want. We're just writing because well, the production, especially, um, yeah. the production is just about what we think sounds nice. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a good place to be mm. I think in, in terms of your artistry. Yeah. Because there's no, like, there's no commercial checkpoints. There's nothing. It's just make an album. No, yeah, totally. Yeah, and yeah. there's still songs that are, you know, commercially viable for yeah, sure. Yeah. And we've probably learnt that over the years. But we say, you say it's self indulgent, but I still think our fans have always wanted that. Yeah, they yeah. want yeah, us yeah, to be sounding like we did when we first yeah. started. So hopefully there's enough of that in there for everyone. And I mean, there is for us. We played yeah. it start to finish the other day. Uh, for the first time we've ever done that, um, right. Cape Hillsborough Beach to launch it. Oh, you did a listening party or something? No, it was a thing for Queensland Music Trials. Oh, where you played? We played yeah. it. Yeah. In between the tides. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of pressure right. on that. <laughs> so the people that didn't think that, people that didn't know what the gig was about were just like, yes, I know every song. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I had to warn them. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. that if you can read the memo. Uh, the memo. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's something we know. <laughs> <laughs> something we can dance to, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a big job, playing an album top to bottom just after Mate, you. It I was good chance. I haven't even played it on. Well, we were supposed to practice and rehearse it when we went to Stanage Bay with the yeah. pirate. Yeah, yeah. But no, the no. pirate got us. And um, <laughs> I mean, it looks like we practiced <laughs> in the videos. The rehearsals, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we did a little bit. And then we did the Tiny Towns tour. But you can't play all the songs. And... Mate, it was full on. To be honest, yeah. we were trying to remember the words and then the chat and the, the chords, and but it worked out yeah. and it was pretty special actually by the end of it. Yeah, right. Well, we're looking forward to it, mate. Um, any um, tour dates have we got? Yeah, the Blood Red tour kicking off middle of August. There, I believe Friday the eighteenth of August in Gladdy. Yeah, really? and then you go Bundy the next night. I notice Fridays, Saturdays, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So you're just taking the week to recover, <laughs> yeah. get back home, recharge, it and takes then, us that long now. Yeah. It does. Fair enough. There's a few, and also yeah, and then all there's over, four so. kids at home. <laughs> yeah, you got to spend some family they need time. Need to sub in at some point. <laughs> Can't be doing the two or three month standards <laughs> anymore. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's all over. <laughs> Queensland, New South Wales, a bit of Victoria in there yeah. too. South Australia as well. Yeah, the Gov. Yeah, yeah. oh, the Gov. You know, Gov. We played the Gov on our live tour. Oh, did you? It's yeah. great we, establishment, um, that place. We were running out of steam. <laughs> We've told this show before. We, we thought we were doing the entertainment centre. Because we did, like, you know, we did QPAC in Brizzy. It was a big Batuta production yeah. with media yeah. and all this shit. And then we, um, yeah, we got bumped. It was Block Party. That, the Block yeah. Party were in town. They're like, oh, you're yeah. not there anymore. So they moved to the Gov. We, it was a relief because we hadn't sold enough tickets for yeah. the entertainment centre. <laughs> And then we kind of get there and we realise, oh, there's two different senses of humour here. Like, you know, <laughs> these Adelaide crowd are coming because, oh, yeah, Batuta, Broken Hill. Like, we kind of get that vibe. And then we kind of, like, they, they, it was just way too localised for them. So we just started making Snowtown jokes. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, we'll play that, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. The yeah. Gov's a good gig. You, Gov's you great. Go, you go backstage and see all the bands that have kind of come out of there. Yeah. You, it's like, you know, there's, there's a place in every city like yeah. that, you know, where they just sell even, they sell better because of the place. You know, the yeah. corner in Melbourne's one. The, yeah, yeah. I think the Trifford and Brizzy's becoming that now. Yeah. And, yeah so you want to go there for a beer as well. Totally. You know, yeah, you know, yeah. happy to go. You know, right. it's going to be a good night. The Gov, what are, what are they playing in uh, Sydney and, and, and Brizzy? Marrickville. they got the Factory Theatre there Factory in Theater. Marrickville. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's the only one in Sydney. you got Newey, Yamba. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, that's an odd one. We're throwing not, that out there. So the bowl, not, not even the Pacific no, Hotel. No, I the just bowl. found that out. So yeah. I hope the bowl is pretty good. The bowl is a good, it's a good spot. Good there. joint, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. we've we've had some good nights at the Pacific. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's it's the best good. pub in. I was going to say Queensland is so nice, but <laughs> <laughs> it's best a great view. pub because best view. Yeah, it's got incredible. a great view, but the pub isn't facing. The, view, nah, like the beer garden <laughs> is facing the street. We're not looking down there. Yeah, yeah, the tourists go and get their nice photos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're not that looking at the garden view. area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. We're watching fucking TV screens all around. Yeah. Yeah. It's staring so into true. a car park. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so I noticed Yamba's a Saturday night, free Friday night before. So yeah, yeah, I think we've got Gimpy and then we have a night off to get there, which we'll yeah, meet okay. after that. Yeah. And then maybe back at Goldie. That's my hometown now. Right. Oh, we're everywhere. Rocky, and then up north, of course, Brizzy and all the rest, but Rocky and... Uh, Rocky Mackay, Towns, Mackay, Mackay, Cairns, 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 they're all... So you, you, you every town once you get to the yeah, yeah, Queensland, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. We, we put them on our metro tours, you know, because yeah. they're our big spots. Yeah, know. for sure. What, are you going to be glamping up at Gympie? Well, well, I hope not. I think we're in and out, aren't we? Yeah. Because oh, we've got to travel to... It's too dangerous, mate. Yeah, we've next... done that 
it is too dangerous. Oh, you can't, yeah. It's yeah. good fun, but it's like um, if we're in the middle of a tour, mate, that place. Have you been? Yeah, I've been there. And I remember there was a punch on one year between <laughs> artists. There, I, I'll tell you when the mics are off, but it was. Uh, <laughs> Love it. Oh, yeah. that's right. We're talking about the same. Yeah, yeah there were. Um, it's a funny yarn, too, because it happened. One was an international artist, one was a local. Um, Love it already. And then, it, you know, la, 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 fuck you, you big mouth, la, la, la. They <laughs> punched on in, like, the artist glamping area. And then that was all, that was it. Because the, the, the Gimpy Muscle is notoriously not not rowdy, like, it's not punchy in the actual. No, nah, it's Like, the, it's, the, the punches are the greatest you'll get. That's true. They're full of rum and there's not one punch thrown, but it was happening in the artist area. <laughs> and, and then that all happened, la, la, la. Two years later, so, something someone missed the memo, and these two were parked next to each other again. Oh. They did it again two years later. They <laughs> that is gold. Yeah. I'm, sh- I'm sure there's been a few <laughs> artists and campers that want to punch us Well, on. there was a year there that, that they banned sleep. fires. Remember the year they banned fires? Oh, so cold. there was no fires. So everyone finished a gig full of rum. They went back to the camps and they, they weren't gazing at a, at a fire. So they're like, <laughs> <laughs> what else are, can we do? <laughs> there were fires all around this, the park. We need these <laughs> hypnotising, <laughs> flickering lights to keep these blokes. <laughs> Of course, that would have gotten a bit rowdy without them. How yeah, do we keep well. warm? No, oh, it's cold. Yeah, We're it's a fire. <laughs> <laughs> Move around a bit. Yeah. Uh, well, bless. Thanks, boys. Thanks for joining us. Um, all the best on this tour, and and yeah, let it rip. Yeah, thanks, thanks guys. Thanks for having us. Blood Red, the album's out now. <laughs>